from the blessings of this world is that Islam suffices as a blessing. And yet fear can Islam unirmatan. Islam suffices as a blessing. If we get nothing else from this world, we mentioned many times, if we don't get the house of our dream, the car of our dream, the degree, the job, the yacht, the vacation home, the spouse, the children, but we leave this world and our heart is illuminated by La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, we've been blessed in this world. And on the other hand, if we leave this world and we attain to the house, and the car that we dreamed of, the yacht, the vacation home, two or three vacation homes, one in the Swiss Alps for the summer, in Vail, Colorado to ski in the winter, on the Riviera to bask on the beach, and who knows where else. And we get the job that we dreamed of. And we're able to retire at 35 from the dream job. And we get the, the spouse that we always dreamed of having. All of the attributes we envision. We get everything we ever desired from the material wherewithal of this world. But we leave this world and our heart is void of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah then we've received nothing from the world because this world passes quickly all of those enjoyments and delight delights they pass quickly and what remains before us is eternal ultimately it's going to be eternal bliss, for some people eternal damnation, for some people a period in hell and then thereafter eternal bliss. We pray we're in the former category, the first category, that we're the people who it's eternal bliss. And no time in hell, no time being tormented in hell. كل نفس ذائقة اللوت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زحزها عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور Everyone will taste death Everyone will experience death كل نفس ذائقة اللوت and then you will be given your recompense in full on the Day of Judgment. Whoever is pulled back and saved from hell and entered into paradise, that's the victorious one. And what is the life of this world except a deceptive amusement or enjoyment? <coughs> So we shouldn't be deceived. We should use this world for the benefit of our souls. We should use this world for the benefit of our hereafter. We should use this world for the rectification of our hearts. We shouldn't be deceived by the wherewithal of this world, including its wealth. We shouldn't be deceived by our children. Wealth and children are the adornment of this worldly life. But that's not the essence. That's the icing on the cake of the dunya. The icing makes the cake look good. But if the cake itself is rotten, what good is the icing? If the cake is spoiled, what good is we make it look good? We put nice icing on it. We write on it with the designs. We put candles. We put rose petals on it. What good is all of that if the cake is rotten? Who's going to eat the cake? So Allah Ta'ala tells us, 
And we're not going to go deeper into this. This was the subject of the previous khutbah. But he tells us, المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا Wealth and children are the adornment of this worldly life. They're the icing on the cake. They're what makes the cake look good. وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتُ خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ أَمَلًا But it's the lasting <coughs> reward from the good deeds that you do. Starting with the remembrance of Allah. The, the baqiyat al-salihat aslan is fundamental meaning subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Glorified is Allah. All praises for Allah. There no, there's no God but Allah. Allah is the greatest. There is no strength or power except with Allah. The reward from that, that's what's best with Allah as a reward and that's the best thing to hope for. Which tells us the remembrance of Allah in this world, that's the cake. The remembrance of Allah in this world, that's the cake. So if we have wealth and children, but we don't have a life that's filled with the remembrance of Allah. We're putting icing on a rotten cake, on a spoiled cake. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, amanu thukurullah thikran kathira. Oh you believers, remember Allah abundantly. Fathkuruni athkurukum, wa shkuruni wa la takfurun. Remember me, I will remember you. Give thanks for my blessings and don't be an ingrate. That's the cake. The children, the wealth, the yacht, the car, the house, all of that, that's the icing. Brothers and sisters, make sure the cake is sound. Make sure the cake is delicious. Make sure the cake is sweet. And then the icing will be appropriate. But we wanted, what we want to talk about is Allah Ta'ala saying in the Qur'an, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَابْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَةِ وَجَاهِدُوا فِي سَبِيلِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Oh you believers, be mindful of Allah. And that mindfulness translates into implementing his orders and avoiding the things he's prohibited in order to ward off with that obedience the punishment of hell. That's what taqwa means. To ward off. So to ward off what? To ward off the punishment of hell through our obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what taqwa is. Ya yuhalladina amana taqwa So Ward off the punishment of hell. And the, the asul again of taqwa is avoiding the prohibitions. <coughs> avoiding the prohibitions. And then some say it's avoiding the prohibitions and or implementing the orders. Ijtinab al nawahi wa imtithal al awamir wa ijtinab al nawahi. Avoiding, implementing the orders. Imtithal al awamir. And avoiding the prohibitions, which denied and nawahi. That's the essence of taqwa. And it comes from a consciousness and an awareness of Allah. So some people translate taqwa as God consciousness. And some people translate taqwa as piety or living a life that's guided by the commandments and prohibitions of Allah. But it's both really. It's a consciousness that gives birth to implementing the orders and avoiding the prohibitions. So Allah Ta'ala orders the believers, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amnu taqu Allah. And then He orders us, Wabtahu ilayhi al-wasila. And then seek the means that lead unto Him. Those who say that taqwa is <coughs> avoiding the prohibitions, will they say, 
our web tawhidah in wasila is undertaking those acts of worship that draw us near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the wasila in that opinion are the al-amal as-saliha, the righteous deeds. The righteous deeds that we undertake. Our prayer, our fasting, our recitation of Qur'an, our night prayer, our awrad, our adhqar, our commanding the good and forbidding the wrong, our lowering our gaze from those things forbidden from us. All of those things constitute the wasila. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that wasila. He's, he's ordering us, وَبْتَهُ And then seek out, يعني أُطْلُهُ Seek out, إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَةِ Those means that draw you near to Him. Some are of the opinion, at taqwa as we mentioned, he is both implementing the orders and avoiding the prohibitions. And some scholar of that vein, they say the wasila is a station in Jannah that the Prophet wasallam said is reserved for one servant of Allah. And he said to ask Allah, pray to Allah that I am that servant. When we hear the event, to ask Allah, you say, Allahumma rabba hadhi da'wati al-tamba wa salati al-qa'ima ati sayyidana muhammadan al-wasilata wal-fadila wa ba'thu maqam al-mahmud al-ladhi wa'akta And that wasila and that maqam mahmud, the wasila is the maqam mahmud. And it's a station in Jannah reserved for one servant. And that's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the logical question would be, why is Allah Ta'ala asking us to seek that station? Wabtahu antum. Wabtahu antum. Wabtahu ilayhi wasila. So, based on that understanding, there appears to be a contradiction. But in reality, there's no contradiction. Because we're told by the Prophet wasallam, if we pray for him to have that station, and then we understand, as he informed one of the companions, who asked him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meta sa'a, when is doomsday? When is the end of it all? Meta sa'a. And the Prophet ﷺ, from his wisdom, he didn't begin, he didn't begin, did not begin to enumerate this or that sign. Rather, he said to his companion, uh, the one who asked him, he said, "Ma adatalaha? What have you done to prepare for it?" So we can know all the signs. We can know all the signs of the dead jack know what he looks like, what's going to happen when he comes, all the signs. But we never take time to memorize the first ten verses of Surah Al-Kaf. We haven't done anything to prepare ourselves, to protect our souls from the fitna of the Dajjal. Because those ten verses are protection from the fitna of the Dajjal. So what's better? To know all of the signs or to do something to prepare ourselves for the fitna. What's better? We have to have our priorities in order, brothers and sisters. This is a religion of action, not a religion of talk. Allah Ta'ala condemns the people of talk.
بن الكاسو كبر كبر مقتا عند الله أن تقول ما لا تفعلون. Terribly hated is it with Allah that you say that which you don't do. This is not a religion of talk. It's not a religion of theory. It's a religion of practice. There are scholars. They're known as Orientalists. They know all the theory. They know no more theory about Islam than any of any of any of us. I guarantee you, they spend their lives studying Islam from a theoretical perspective. But most of them, they don't practice it even one iota. All of that theory renders them less than the most ignorant believer who humbly prays to his or her Lord. All of that theory is worthless. It only has benefit if it enhances our practice. It only has benefit if it softens our hearts. It only has benefit if we translate it into something that draws us close to Allah. So the Prophet asked the man, "Ma'adatalah," and he said in one version, "Inni uhibu Allah wa Rasula." Verily, I love Allah and His Messenger. The shortest possible version. And the Prophet said to him, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, anta ma'a man ahbat." You will be with the one you love. And in another version, "Al-Marku ala man ahab," that a person will be with the one he loves. So if the Prophet has the wasila, and we love the Prophet, we will be with the Prophet, and we will share in that station. Enter ma'a man ahbat, al-Marku ala ma'a man ahab. And so some scholars say. الوسيلة هي المحبة والرحمة. That is love and mercy. That's what the wasila is. But the first meaning is the soundness. That is those righteous deeds we do to draw ourselves close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And so we pray with Allah is telling us in the Quran, وَبْتَوْهُ إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَةِ. So seek those practices and those actions. That draw you close; those righteous actions, those acts of devotion that draw you close to Allah. That's from the Quran. Webtahu ilayhi wasila. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he taught us to pray. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak. Oh Allah, I ask you your love. Wa hubbu wa hubbu man yuhubbak. And the wa hubba man yuhubbak. And the love of those who love you. وحب العمل الذي يبلغنا حبك أو يقربنا حبك and love of those actions that draws close to your love. That's the believer. That's the believer, brothers and sisters. The believer lives a life of devotion. The believer lives a life of love. The believer has a deep and meaningful relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And the believer, because he or she has a deep, meaningful, rich relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, he or she is in dazzle by the wherewithal of this world. He or she is in dazzle. We mentioned in a class we had the other day here the saying of Imam Ali when he's asked to describe the righteous people. So one of the devout people came to Imam Ali and he asked him, "Fakar." صف لي المتقين حتى كأني أنظر إليها إليهم. Describe me the people of Taqwa with so much clarity. It's as if I am looking at them. And one of the descriptions he had, descriptions that he had of them, he said رضي الله عنه كرم الله وجهه عظم الخالق في أنفسهم فالصقرة ما دونه في عيونهم. أظلم الخالق في أنفسهم. The Creator has become great in their souls. فالصغر ما دونه في عيونهم. And everything else has become small in their eyes. But what's the condition of most of us today? أظلم أظلم الخلق في عيوننا. فالصغر الله في أنفسنا. 
The creation has become big in our eyes, so our minds become small in our souls. That's the condition of most people. And when we seek refuge with the law from that. We're dazzled by the big buildings and the nice cars and the big the big bridges and the dazzling light and the widescreen television and the this and the that and the other of the world. And it dazzles our eyes. It preoccupies our time. We spend work and extra job to get more of it. We, we discard what we've paid for so we can go back into debt to pay for more dunya and spend our time that we were freed up. The house is paid off. The car is paid off. The loans are paid off. And instead of enjoying taking advantage of that, of that time, we, have, we can work less. It's all paid off. And we can devote more and more of our time to the worship of Allah and to deepening our relationship with Allah. What do we do? We refinance the house. And we get a new car. And we get more dunya. And we get in debt all over again. So most of our time is spent working to pay for that dunya that's become great in our eyes. فَعَظْمَ الْخَوْقُ فِي عَيُونِهِمْ فَصَغْرَ اللَّهُ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ The righteous people. This, this verse is talking about the people of taqwa. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهُ and Imam Adi is talking about the muttaqeen. Sif me and muttaqeen. Hatta ka anni anzuru ilayhim. Faqala radiyallahu an. Adam al-khaliku fi anfusihim. Fasagara ma dunahu fi ayunihim. The creator has become great in their eyes. And everything, everyone other than him has become small in their souls. May Allah bless us to, that, to have that maqam. وقام التقوى لا إله إلا الله وابتغوا إليه الوسيلة وجاهدوا في سبيله and strive in his path this is for the generality of believers this is for the generality of believers we should live lives of struggle when we don't struggle as believers that's when the dunya becomes big in our eyes when we don't struggle as, the, as believers, that's when shaitan has an opening to our hearts. When we don't struggle as believers, that's when we lose the sweetness of our faith. People come, oh, Imam Zaid, or to someone else, Fulan, Ya Fulan, Ya Imam, Ya Sheikh, Ya Akhi. I don't feel it anymore. You know, I just... I just don't feel it. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you getting up to pray? When's the last time you read a khatam of Quran? When's the last time you got up to, at night to pray? And you stood before your Lord. And you beseeched your Lord until the tears started flowing out of your eyes. Until your heart started longing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When's the last time you fasted outside of Ramadan? When's the last time you read the Mathurat or the Weird Latif or whatever compilation of the Adhkar as Sabah with Masat? And then you're complaining you don't feel it? This is business and every business requires an investment. And if you don't make an investment in a business, do you get a return? Do you get a dividend? It doesn't work like that in the dunya, and it doesn't work like that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the proof of that, Allah ta'ala tells us, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min adabin alim. O you believers, shall I direct you to a business, a transaction, هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ تِجَارَةٍ تُنْجِيكُمْ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Shall I direct you to a commerce that will save you from a painful punishment? What's the investment? تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Believe in Allah and His Messenger. وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خير 
لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ And that you strive and you struggle in the way of Allah with your wealth and your life, that is best for you if you but knew. This is a religion of struggle, brothers and sisters. This is a religion of getting out of the bed. He also said, Imam Adi, he said, Sabura, uh, Sabaru, أَيَّامًا قَصِيرَةً عَقَبَتْهَا عَقَبَتْهَا رَاحَةٌ طَوِيلًا they, they, they patiently endured the discomfort of a few days in this world. In other words, they don't seek their raha, their comfort in this world. Because they know if they live a life of struggle, and if they live a life of faith, they're going to have a nice, comfortable rest in the akhirah, starting in their grave. عَقَبَتْهَا رَاحَةٌ طَوِيلًا صَبَرُوا أَيَّامًا قَصِيرَةً عَقَبَتْهَا رَاحَةٌ طَوِيلًا Don't look for your comfort in this world. Look for struggle in this world. Work for this religion. Work for the people of the religion. Work for the betterment of humanity. Contribute to the struggles that are going on. And we're not talking about some involved thing. It might be something simple. It might just be forming a group to assist the poor people. It might be uh, providing rides to people who don't have cars in poor neighborhoods. It might be something simple. It might be just going out, organizing to tell people about Islam, going to the community centers, going to the various associations to tell people about the religion, to clarify the misperceptions. It might be as simple as that. But it's going to be, require effort and sacrifice. But that's the nature of Islam. And again, it's, we're not, we're here. We're a minority of Muslims. We're not talking about fighting. Some people have to defend themselves in Muslim countries. Their, their lands have been invaded and occupied. And they're involved in a noble struggle that sometimes is misrepresented by criminals <coughs> who in the name of their so-called jihad are murdering primarily Muslims, putting bombs in marketplaces and places of worship, recruiting centers where poor Muslims who can't get a job except in the <laughs> national police force or go to sign up and some misguided person in the name of what he might think is jihad puts a bomb there and blows up 30 or 40 Muslims and discredits the noble struggle of people whose homes have been uh, and lands have been occupied, whose sons and daughters have been murdered unjustly. And so they wage a noble struggle against those occupiers. That's the lot of some Muslims. That's not our lot. Our struggle is different. Our struggle is a struggle of education. We sit and hear Islam abused. What are we doing to clarify the mis misperception? What are we doing to educate the people, brothers and sisters? In order that you will be successful. In order that you will be successful. So, one of the exegetes mentions, there are four keys to our success. They're all mentioned in this verse. Faith, Iman. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. To have a firm faith. We should strive to be that strong believer. And mu'min al-qawi khayrun wa haqqu ibullahi min al-mu'min al-da'if wa fi kul al-khayr. The strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer and in each there is good. We should strive to be that strong believer. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. Iman. Taqwa Allah. Taqwa. We mentioned implementing Allah's orders, avoiding those things He's prohibited. Or avoiding the prohibitions to ward off the punishment of hell. Ibtiqa al wasila. Ibtiqa al wasila. So seeking to do those righteous deeds. Al amal al salihat. Or, as we said, if we say taqwa is the order, implementing the orders and avoiding the prohibition then striving with might and main to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to revive his sunnah in our lives. And then the fourth, وَجَاهِدُوا فِي سَبِيلِهِ Strive and struggle 
for his sake, for the sake of his religion, for the sake of his people, for the sake of humanity. So we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he blesses us with firm faith. He blesses us all to be that mu'min qawi. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with taqwa. That he blesses us to be the people of taqwa. That he, that he fills our souls with taqwa. So that we're eager to implement his orders. And we're eager to avoid the things he's prohibited. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blesses us with the means that draw us near to him. That he blesses us with those means. And he makes us... He blesses us to be amongst the muqarrabeen, those who are nearest to Him, the muqarrabeen. And that Allah Ta'ala blesses us to be amongst the mujahideen, those who struggle for His sake. And as we said, in a way appropriate for our situation. And with wisdom. One of our scholars described wisdom and hikmah. He said, فِعْلُوا مَا يَنْبَغِي Doing what is appropriate in the most appropriate manner at the most appropriate time. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to be people of wisdom. And may He bless us to be people who struggle. And may He bless us to be successful. And if we're sincere, and if we're, our faith is firm, and we do the, live the life of the believers, we will be successful. Allah Ta'ala has already mentioned that. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ May Allah bless us to do the, have the descriptions of those successful believers. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفُرُ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِيْسَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَقَوْمِ اسْتَغْفُرُ اللَّهِ سيد المرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ورسولنا وقرة عيوننا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله ما ما الله تعالى bless us ما الله protect us ما الله strengthen us ما الله bless all of those Muslims struggling everywhere for to live a dignified life to live a life befitting of the believers to attain their basic human dignity that wasn't given them by the universal declaration of human rights it wasn't given to them by this or that constitution it wasn't given to them by some principles that someone introduced it was given to all of us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he declared in the Quran وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِ Adam," that we have ennobled the human being May Allah Ta'ala bless us all to attain to that nobility, to maintain that nobility, to hold fast to that nobility. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to be successful. Allahumma ufeel al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat, wa al-Mu'mineen wa al-Mu'minat, al-Ahyai minhum wa al-Amwaab. Rabbana la tuzik kulubana, ba'd idh hadaytana, wa hab lana min ladunka rahma indik anta al-Wahhab. Rabbana afrag alayna sabran, wa thabbit aqadamana, wa unsurna ala al-Qawm al-Kathirin. Rabbana afrag alayna sabran, wa thabbit aqadamana, wa tawathana muslimin, wa aafu anna, wa ufir lana, wa arhamna, anta mawlana fa unsurna ala al-Qawm al-Kathirin. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min al-Hamdi wa al-Hazim. ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلقة الدين وقهر الرجال اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تعول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك 
ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين واعف عنا وافقي لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا المسلمين في فلسطين وفي العراق وفي كشمير في أفغانستان في 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 باكستان في الهند في البنغال في في أفغانستان اللهم انصر إخواننا المسلمين في الصومال وفي مصر وفي الشام يا الله اللهم انصر إخواننا وأخواتنا المسلمات في الشام وفي ليبيا في تونس في في الجزائر في المغرب موريتانيا في السنغال في مالي في نيجيريا في كل مكان يا الله اللهم انصرنا في هذا البلد اللهم انصرنا في هذا البلد اللهم انصرنا في هذا البلد اللهم من أراد خيرا لهذه الأمة المحمدية فوثق لكل خير ومن أراد شرا لها وللمسلمين فخفه أخذ عزيز مقتدر اللهم اجعل تدبيرهم تدميرهم اللهم عليك بعداء الإسلام أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يعصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أكم الصلاة يرحمني ورحمه الله الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح